What's up everybody and welcome to another tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can quickly piece animated videos together just like the one you're seeing right now even if you had no prior animation experience. With just a few clicks of the mouse button after this video, you should be able to start creating professional looking animations. And to do this, we're going to be using a software called Create Studio. Now, this is not a free software. It does cost about $100 a year to get a license. But as of the time I'm recording this video, there's a current promotion going on now that you can get this software for $67 for a one-time fee. So you pay that just once. If you want to take advantage of that, there is a link in the description of this video. Click on that and check it out if you are interested. And at the end of this video, I'm going to be giving away one free license to one of you so you can get started creating animations today. Before we actually get to the tutorial, a number of you have been telling me that you don't get notifications when I release new videos. To solve that, it's quite simple. Next to the subscribe button, there's a little bell icon. Just click on that and click on all for notifications and that way you get notified when I release new videos. Now that that is out of the way, for real, let's get started with the tutorial. Come on. Okay, when you open the software for the first time, you're presented with this window. I want to draw your attention to this template section because this is really where the strength of this software comes into play. There are tons of templates you can use for your project that are ready made, you just need to edit the text. And these are not just animation templates, they're templates you can use for your YouTube videos and also templates you can use for social media. Like this one right here of an elephant coming out of your Instagram post. So you can create cool things like that using this software. But for now, we're not gonna use templates. Uh, let's go to the software and create something from scratch so you can understand better how the software works. And then we're gonna get back to the templates in a second. So the first thing you wanna do is go and click on create new project. So for our demo today, we're going to be creating a short promo to get donations for our local zoo. So I'll call it Save the Zoo. And then next you just select your different resolution. So whether HD or you're trying to post this for social media. In my case, I'm going to use HD. And once you're done with that, just click on Create Project Now. So this should open up a blank project. Everything you see in black right here is what's called a canvas. And this is where all your magic is going to be coming to life. Right below it, you have your project timeline and everything you add on your canvas would show up in your timeline. And this is where you can control their length and things like that. To your far right, you have what I'm calling the settings panel. So every parameter you'd want to change for items you have on your timeline would most likely always be right there to the right. And right at the top, we have the tools panel where you have tools for shapes, adding a little objects that you can use to build your scene, text and the camera tool. And then to the far left, we have the media panel region. So every media that you'd want to import into your project would be right here and also pre-made characters would be right here. So now that you are familiar with the interface, let's go ahead and create our little demo. So if you head over to the studios tab, you're going to see a bunch of assets that you can use to build out your scene. And they actually have a couple of already pre-made scenes that you can use to start telling your story pretty quickly. And the difference between scenes and templates is that a template will be made up of several scenes put together to tell a story. But in our case, we want to build this all from scratch. So we're going to go ahead and first start by adding a background to our canvas. So I'm going to click on the background. And as you can see, there are 3D backgrounds and different style, but I'm interested in the 2D style and most specifically the flat background. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom and drag this background of a forest into the canvas. And if I play that back, you should see now that the background animates and that is already looking pretty good. And if you go down to the timeline, you can now see that we have a new asset, which is named forest background in our scene. All right. The next thing we're going to do is to go ahead and add a character to our scene and characters could be compared to movie actors from a movie set. And they come with pre-made actions that you could use to quickly bring them to life by animating them. All right. To add a character, I'm going to go back and click on home and then click on characters and just like the backgrounds they are different style of characters but I'm interested in the classy cartoon kind of style of characters and then what I'm looking for is any kind of animal and I see this uh, panda which looks interesting so I'm just gonna click and drag the panda and drop it right into the canvas and there you go we have now a panda in our set so I'm just gonna resize and uh, rescale him and then the next thing I'm going to do is just drag right here in the timeline, just drag that right to the beginning so that when I play it, the panda is there from the beginning. And that is looking pretty good so far. If you noticed when the scene started, the panda is just kind of staying there, sort of kind of lifeless. And what we want to do is change the default action that he has. So to do that, you just want to click on the action that says idle. 
and then just change that to something more interesting. Probably let's try the jump in and wave and let's see how that looks like. Alright, so we can play that back either with spacebar or clicking on the play button and that looks a whole lot more interesting now. So one more thing that you notice there is that the character sort of disappears after that action and that is because we don't have enough action to keep him on the scene and we can fix that by just clicking on add action to add one more action and I'm going to try dancing and right there now if I play it you see he's going to be on the scene. So let's go ahead and add one more character. Let's add this little uh, girl to the scene. So I'm just going to click and drop her on the set and then I'm going to just uh, move her to scale properly and let's see what that looks like okay just like the panda she also just appears on the scene so we want to change the action from idle and also i'm going to change that to let's see let's try uh jump in and wave also all right so let's play that back again using spacebar all right she jumps in and waves but if you notice she just jumps in from thin air so what we want to do is invert her location so i'm going to click on that layer and then there's a little flip horizontal button here so that she's facing the other direction now if I play that, you see she comes in from the other side and that looks a whole lot better. Alright, we're going to go ahead and add a few more actions to finish this scene. So a sad action for the little girl and then on the panda, we'll have an action for him just finishing up some food, a bamboo sticks, to signify that the animals are running out of food and the little girl is sad about this. Alright, and when I play that back, it looks like this and we are looking pretty good so far. Our first scene is now complete and it's always a good idea to group all the items together to keep your timeline organized and to do that you want to hold shift and click on each of the items on the timeline then right click and click on create group and then to the left you can simply just rename that to scene one and that makes our first scene all right next we're going to create our second scene which will be our call to action to ask the audience to donate and to do this you want to go over again to the backgrounds and this time around I want to find another background also of nature. I'm going to drop that into the canvas and as you can see on the timeline that has been added. I'm going to add uh, the lion character also to this canvas. And this time around since the call to action is visiting a website, let's look for something that has to do with a computer. And I see one here that says walking on a PC and this looks perfect for what we're trying to do. So if we play that back, it transitions into the lion typing. Next, I want to tell you about transitions and transitions simply help you switch between scenes in your project smoothly. To add a transition, you go back to home and then click on transitions. You can select on several. Um, I would probably select this one that says circles and I'll drop it into the canvas. And on my timeline, I'll just drag it to start between when the previous scene ended and when the new one starts. And when I play that back, you can see there is a transition that plays and when it opens up, we have the lion now on the computer. All right, next we're going to go ahead and add some text to this. So I'll use the text tool to add some text to the canvas and I'll just double click to change the text and I'll put the website that you need to go to donate. And to the right panel here, you can change the font, uh, the size and things like that. So if you go ahead and play this back, you're going to notice that our text randomly appears on the screen. We're going to fix this by animating it. And to do this, you want to expand on the text track to your left by clicking on the little arrow to expand that. And you now have an option to either animate or add a text effect. So I want to do the text effect. So I'm going to click on the plus icon so I can show you the doodling tool on this software. And on the text effect, there's several effects, but I'm going to click on the doodle effect. All right, next I'm just going to look for a hand that fits the style of the animation we're doing. And I think this looks pretty good. Next, I'm going to go ahead and scale it by reducing the size parameter right here. And if we play that back, it looks something like this. If you looked keenly, you might have noticed that the hand is floating in the air and we will fix this using the camera tool. So the camera tool adds a virtual camera to your set and you can do things like zooming in and panning around and things like that. So to use the camera tool, simply just click on the camera icon at the top right here to enable the camera view. And then if you look down in your timeline, you should now see a new camera track added. If you click on the plus sign, it will add a new camera to the timeline. And I'm just going to drag that to start where the lion comes in. And then I'll move my playhead to the end of the camera. And then I'll just put a new position for my camera. In our case, I just want to zoom in to right where the lion is and where the hand starts. Awesome. So now if we play this back, there should now be a camera movement that zooms into the lion and then the hand comes in. And this makes the end of scene two. Like I did before, I'm just going to group them together and label this as scene two. 
All right, next we're gonna be doing some sound design to add some background music and voiceover to our project. And there are several ways to do this. If you head over to the media tab, you can easily import your music or voiceover. And the good thing is that if you also click on the cloud icon, this opens the internal media library that has access to a couple of stock websites where you can get videos, images, and sound libraries for free, royalty free. So what we're interested in is the audio tab. So I'm gonna click on the audio tab and then I'm just gonna search for some happy music under the happy category. So I'm just gonna click on the little download icon and this should download this into my media library. So I'm just gonna click on that and drop it into the project. It's added to the timeline and I'll just drag that to the bottom. I like all my audio at the bottom of the timeline. So next I'm gonna add some voice over. So if you click on that icon, there's a text to speech icon and right here you can paste whatever text you want it to read and the system is gonna read that for you. And they have quite a number of languages that you can select here and try out. And even under the languages, there are different voices. I'm gonna try Kit's voice and I'm gonna click on generate and let's preview that. Meet Babu, the fun and happy panda that keeps the kids happy at the zoo. But without your donations, Babu and all the other animals will go hungry. All right, that sounds pretty good to me. So I'm just gonna click on import into library and that should add that voice over to my media library. And I'll just rename this to voice over. And then next I'll just click and drag that again into the canvas and then drag that to the bottom of the timeline and just arrange that. So let's play that to hear what it sounds like. Meet Babu, the fun and happy panda that keeps the kids happy at the zoo. All right, that's sounding pretty good. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is reduce my background music because it's a little bit too loud. And to do this, make sure the background music track is selected by clicking on it. And then just go to the top right and just reduce the volume. The next thing I notice is that the last part of the voiceover does not align properly with the text that comes up on the screen. So the timing is off. So we're going to fix that. It's quite easy to do. So what you want to do is right click on the voiceover tab and click on duplicate. So we now have two. And on the bottom one, just reduce the length so that it takes away the last part of the voiceover. And on the top part, we're going to take away all of the beginning part of it. So we now have two voiceovers. And then what I'm just gonna do is on the top one, I'll just drag it farther back in the timeline so that it aligns to where the text comes in. Help today by visiting savethezoo.com. And that's that quite simple to do. Next, I'll zoom out of my timeline by clicking and dragging on the slider right here. And then I'm just gonna adjust the background music so it ends the same place the rest of the scene ends. And then if I go to the right here, I'm just gonna add some fade so that the music fades slowly out. And when you're ready to share your video with the rest of the world, simply click on the publish button right here choose a destination, give your project an awesome name, click on save, and then just hit the publish button and you can now share it with the world. Meet Babu, the fun and happy panda that keeps the kids happy at the zoo. But without your donations, Babu and all the other animals will go hungry. Help today by visiting savethezoo.com. Before we go, I have two more tips for you. The first is if you're trying to create animations with a 3D look, that's quite easy to do and I'll show you an example. So when you go over to select your background, instead of selecting the 2D one, you can click on the 3D category and let's go ahead and drag uh, this dental clinic. So I'm just gonna drag that and drop it in. And then also I'm gonna go back to my characters and I'm going to go to the 3D category of characters. And let's see, let's use this dentist for example, that's a good fit. So next thing, we just need to add our actions just the same way we did it for the 2D animation. And just like that, we're gonna have an animation that has a 3D feel. It's quite simple and easy to do. All right, for tip number two, at the beginning of the video, I told you that templates are one of the fastest ways to get your animations together. So let me show you a quick example. So I've headed back to my template library and let's use this one that says staying fit at home. And let's do a little video on showing people how to stay fit at home. So you just click on use template and wait for it to download. So once your template opens to the left of your timeline, you're going to see all the scenes that have been created for that particular template. To edit any scene, just double click on it to open it up. So let's open up this scene number one and let's make a little bit of an edit to it. So I'm gonna edit this scene to say this is a presentation by Emmanuel Crown. And the easiest way to do this is just duplicating one of the texts that already exist. This way it copies over the animations that are already in it. So I'm gonna right click on it and click on duplicate and then drag that to the bottom and just type in my name in place of the text that was already there. So why don't we go ahead and make one more edit to this template. I'm gonna edit scene four to change this message to say thank you. And then I'm gonna put my picture instead of the Create Studio logo. So I'm just gonna double click on the text and just type the word thank you. 
and then right here at the top there's a layer that says replace logo so i'm gonna click on that track and then there's now a blue button that appears so if i click on that it allows me to select any image that i have on my media library in my case i'm gonna select my picture and the logo is replaced so i just need to drag that and scale it properly and just like that we're done editing this template and we're ready to export it and share with the world all right that's all i had for you guys today if you enjoyed that video the best way you can tell me thank you is by hitting the like button because that helps me with growing this channel and you can also share this video with a friend who might enjoy watching this too now in the beginning of the video i said i was going to be giving away a free license to this software and yes i am doing that actually by the way if you followed me on instagram and twitter a couple of weeks back i gave away licenses to this software on those platforms so if you're not following me on there i welcome you to follow me on there so you can be informed when i'm doing some of these giveaways but for this particular video for you to win the license it's quite simple first you need to be subscribed to this channel so if you're not yet subscribed hit that subscribe button and turn the notifications so you get notified when i create new content next is right below the comments of this particular video let me know what kind of animations you want to create using this software and i'm going to go through those comments the one i like most i'm going to give you a free license to start using the software that's all i had for you guys today thank you for stopping by i'll catch you guys in the comments and make sure you keep learning bye